On va attendre de l'enregistrer. Hello everybody, we are going to, to rate uh, just 30 seconds uh, that everybody can come in the in the meeting room. And now we are going to start after. Okay, so let's start. So hello everybody, I'm happy to be in front of you today in order to co-present um, to you a short webinar with Pierre Bourdon from Monera regarding multiple laser beam combination based on the um, MPLC technique in the defense field and especially how to implement high um, efficiency combiners uh, with an opt optimal output beam quality. Um, if you have any question during um, this presentation, a dedicated space is available on the bottom right side. Uh, Pujian, head of the product uh, marketing team, is with me today and will sort out uh, your question. Um, we will answer them at the end of the presentation with, with Pierre. Uh, please just detail if you ask a, a question to Pierre or, or to me. Okay. So who are we? Let me introduce ourselves. My name is Tanguy Guenik and I'm a project and product manager at Skylabs. I'm in charge of the custom application. I'm glad to be today with Pierre Bourdon, a special advisor for laser source and resources and system for defense application at Onera, the famous uh, aerospace lab. Pierre is very well known expert for this knowledge in laser source combination techniques. Um, before the presentation of Pierre, uh, I will tell you a few words about Skylabs. Okay. Um, we are at Skylabs, we are a deep tech company. Uh, Skylabs developed a few years ago a unique patented technology, which is the MPLC, as multiplane light uh, conversion. And more generally, we are experts in beam shaping. Uh, we are now more than 50, and we are in capacity to, to develop, manufacture, and sell innovative optical components. And we are located at Rennes in France. Um, our expertise is beam shaping, what we call uh, exactly with beam shaping. It's possible to play on several properties of the light, uh, especially inside an optical fiber, uh, like the power, the wavelength, the polarization of the, of the face. And at Kai Labs, with the help of our MPLC and our unique patented technology uh, that I will describe after, we allow the addition of a new degree of freedom uh, thanks to beam shaping, which is the shape of the light. Um, this has a lot of area of applications, and we developed a range of products around our complex beam shaping expertise. Let me present them. Uh, first, we have the Canunda uh, range, which is specialized uh, into the improvement of industrial cutting lasers. We have after the Aruna product. Uh, Aruna proposes to improve existing legacy network. And Tilba is dedicated to the free space laser communications. Um, Prote Proteus. Proteus is um, the state of the art, the art uh, of the space division multiplexing. And finally, uh, we have custom. Custom uh, is not a product. It's relative to, to specific uh, development for application in defense, aeronautic, automotive, or biomedical. Uh, our Kylabs beam combiners are linked uh, to this custom application. So now I'm going to let uh, Pierre present his very good introduction uh, to the world of laser combining. Uh, thanks, Tanguy, for the introduction. Uh, so as uh, Tanguy already mentioned, I'm uh, Pierre Bourdon. I'm from Onera, the French Aerospace Lab. Uh, and uh, I will talk to you uh, today uh, a brief introduction to the world of laser combining, an area where I've been working for, I think, most, more than 10 years or 15 years. I don't remember exactly uh, today. Um, so first of all, uh, let me present you briefly Onera. Um, uh, Onera is a, a group of French aerospace research centers. Uh, the main centers are in Palaiso, near Paris, and uh, in Toulouse, in the southwest of France. And uh, we are uh, working on um, 
innovative solutions for the industry. Uh, we are serving as expert advisor uh, to the government and we are trying to shape the future of aerospace uh, with a, a lot of activities uh, in uh, many fields, uh, many technical fields, uh, structured around uh, 12 uh, challenges uh, serving defense, aeronautics and space applications. And uh, more specifically, I'm working in the optics department. Uh, optics department at Onera covers uh, all the technical areas of optics and optronics, uh, from modeling of the optical scene, of optical signatures or uh, propagation through the atmosphere, uh, optical instruments, uh, design and uh, realization, uh, high performance optical instruments, high resolution optical imaging systems, and laser sources and applications. And of course, uh, I'm working on the laser sources and applications uh, as you will discover now um, to summarize um, i will quote our ceo uh, bruno saint jean and uh, in all the major civil and uh, military aerospace programs now you have somehow a very strong dose of on era inside uh, we are almost everywhere <laughs> in these programs and you can find here the links uh, to the social networks and the websites uh, that you can go to if you want to know more about on era Okay, so multiple beam laser combi combination now. Uh, I can only give you today an, a brief introduction to the world of laser combining. I will uh, let you uh, know about the, 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 main, uh, the main technical uh, issues and the main techniques that we can use. But first of all, why do we need laser combining techniques? Uh, there's uh, really a, a, an interest in increasing the power, uh, that's often called power scaling, lasers. Uh, as you may know, uh, the most uh, powerful and the most efficient uh, lasers today are the diode pump solid state lasers. They can achieve a very high wall plug efficiency. So basically with uh, 100 watt electrical power, you can generate up to 40 watt uh, optical power, which is exceptional in terms of uh, efficiency for a for laser, wall plug efficiency for laser. But unfortunately, when you increase the power of such lasers, uh, there is, interestingly, in, in a laser, uh, the pump power must be absorbed, so uh, you can't avoid absorption of the power, of some of the power, and so you are limited by the uh, medium heating up and the uh, thermal effects uh, that can be detrimental to the, the power scaling. Uh, you can uh, suffer less from these effects if you use fibers, uh, that's a specific geometry for solid state medium. Uh, but anyway, as the fiber is very narrow diameter, generally you have very high power density inside the fiber, and so you are limited by other power clamping phenomena, such as nonlinear effects or damage threshold limitations. So what can you do when you uh, reach the, the maximum power for, for a given uh, solid state laser? Uh, you can use multiple lasers and you can try to uh, efficiently power some uh, uh, these lasers. That's called laser beam combining. So basically you take uh, 10 lasers and you try to get 10 times the power of a, of a single laser. But it's not as simple as that. Um, it's already well known. Uh, I'm talking about combining, but in fact, uh, it's another way to talk about multiplexing. That's a, a, a term that's, uh, that's very well known, especially in the field of telecommunications, uh, where you have to achieve very high uh, data rates. And uh, you can do that by multiplexing in time, in amplitude and phase, in wavelength, in polarization, and in space. Uh, and spreading the data over multiple channels. That's what's generally called multiplexing. And combining is just the same thing, but when you spread the power of, of lasers over multiple channels. So basically the main difference is, is in what you spread over multiple channels, data or power. So what kind of applications do we aim at, uh, if you allow me to use this term, aim. <laughs> uh, the, the, the main application uh, in, the, in, in the defense field uh, that has driven the, the, the work on, on combining techniques for lasers is the laser weapon application. This is a, an example of a, of a laser weapon demonstrator system that's been developed in the US by the US Navy and tested. It. Uh, it's built to destroy uh, UAVs uh, at around one kilometer distance. and um, they used to build this demonstrator, they used the simplest way you have to combine lasers, 
It's an incoherent combining method because the, the laser beams do not interfere when they overlap. And it's all very simple. Uh, you align the lasers so that they overlap on the target in the far field. And you can use uh, commercially available high power fiber lasers for that. Uh, here they use six, eight kilowatt uh, power lasers for around 50 kilowatt total power and deposited on the target. They use standard gimbals and uh, they can manage to, to perform efficient uh, in current combining on the target. And uh, they demonstrated the capability to destroy UAVs uh, with this kind of systems. Another in current combining technique, uh, very efficient too, is spectral beam combining. Uh, you may know about it uh, in telecommunications, it's called wavelength division multiplexing. Uh, so you take, uh, for instance, uh, on, this, uh, on this figure, uh, three lasers at three different wavelengths. You send them on an appropriate di direction on a diffraction grating, and if you do that, you will have the, the three beams diffracted in the same, di in the same direction, sorry, uh, here, you have the lambda uh, multiplexed beam, the wavelength multiplexed beam, uh, and the free wavelength you will find in the spectrum, in the, 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 the combined spectrum. Uh, they will be side by side in the spectrum, and the result will be an output spectrum, which is a wavelength comb, in fact, with the, the, the multiple wavelength uh, side by side. You also can use uh, current combining techniques. In this case, uh, you will have interference between the laser beams because they are at the same wavelength and they are neural line width, so they are highly coherent. And uh, when you overlap such beams, they will interfere, not always constructively. Uh, so you have to control the phase of these beams uh, in real time. And that's why on all these configurations here, you will find uh, a way to measure the phase difference between the lasers and the controller that controls the phase of each uh, channel uh, very fast uh, in real time. You have different configurations. Uh, the simplest one is to use beam splitters. So uh, basically you add uh, the beams one after the other uh, and you overlap them one, one after the others uh, using a beam splitter. And uh, in the end, you will have a single beam and uh, interference rings and uh, a central interference lobe in the, in the far field. And controlling the phase, you will be able to concentrate most of the power in the central lobe of interference uh, in the far field. Uh, a very nice configuration is what's called the tile aperture configuration, where you put all the outputs of the laser side by side in an array of, of, uh, of uh, optical apertures. Um, you must have a as high as possible field factor if you want to get very good uh, combining efficiency. And in the far field, you will have an array of lobes and uh, you will be able, if you control the phase in real time, to uh, concentrate most of the power in the central lobe of interference. This is if you would try to uh, generate the interference pattern after propagating to the far field. You can also use combiners, uh, diffractive optical elements. Uh, they are placed uh, near the output of the, of the lasers. And uh, for instance, this is a diamond grating uh, component. Uh, it can overlap uh, multiple beams into a single beam. And then you let this single beam propagate to the far field. But it's also a, a method that requires to control the phase in real time. It's a current combining technique. What are the best results today in terms of power? Uh, the highest power ever reached with solid state lasers was obtained through current combining. Uh, the Northrop Grumman in uh, 2009 built seven uh, 15 kilowatts. So uh, each uh, unitary uh, laser is already uh, very high power. And they used current combining by active phase control in real time to combine uh, these seven lasers into a 105 kilowatt uh, beam. And they can operate this laser almost indefinitely. Uh, they demonstrated uh, and uh, published a 300 second operation, but in fact, they can uh, operate longer than that. Uh, another example in the Air Force Research Lab, another lab working a lot on current combining of fiber lasers this time. They combined uh, five 1.2 kilowatt fiber lasers at one micron or so. Why one micron? Because it's the wavelength where you can obtain very high power uh, more easily than at other wavelengths. Uh, the result is a five kilowatt total power uh, in the central lobe of, com uh, of uh, interference. 
Um, so um, let me introduce to you a, a very important value that's the combining efficiency. Uh, the simplest way to define it is to do the ratio between the power you achieve to concentrate in the, the central lobe of interference and the uh, emitted power. Uh, here we have six kilowatt emitted power and uh, we achieve 52 uh, percent, 82 percent, sorry, uh, combining efficiency. A very important parameter also is the beam quality, BM square. It's very close to one, so the beam is uh, close to diffraction limited, meaning that you conserve uh, through combining, and it's very important to conserve that, you keep the capability of the beam to be focused on a very small diameter uh, using a focusing lens, for instance. And you don't want the combining process to, uh, to be detrimental to this uh, diffraction limit of the beam. Very nice results from Lockheed Martin on spectral beam combining. They are really the experts in the world of, of, of uh, spectral beam combining, the very, very high power results. Um, they combine uh, almost 100 lasers uh, at one micron, again, iterogram fiber lasers, uh, 300 watt each for a, a total of 30 kilowatt power with an excellent, uh, almost perfect uh, combining efficiency of 94%. Uh, if you are uh, more honest, let's say that there's almost, uh, only 75% of the power into the airy disk, which is the central part of the, of the beam, of the interference pattern not the interference pattern of the beam in this case, because it's in current combining, of course. And uh, meaning that the, the, the efficiency is closer, in fact, to 75% than to 94%. But, okay, if you take the, the basic definition, it's 94%. And the beam is somehow um, worse in terms of quality. It's only 1.6, 1.8 in terms of M square, but it's, it's still quite good for a beam, and you can still focus it on a very small diameter if you want. And they also demonstrated uh, twice the power by doubling the laser power, but with um, worse uh, efficiency, was was lower and uh, was decreased, and the, the M square was was worse. They never really published the, the figures on this one. So it's a very nice uh, realization of spectral beam, spectral beam combining. You can see the spectrum here, uh, and uh, over the 30 nanometer uh, wide gain bandwidth for the the iterbium fiber laser. Uh, you occupy most of this bandwidth with uh, your 100 or 9600, uh, 96 uh, wavelength uh, that you combine. So, uh, what are the technical issues and the main limitations uh, that you will encounter if you try to use these uh, combining techniques? Uh, first of all, uh, especially if you use a, a combiner uh, such as a diffraction grating or a, a diffractive optic elements, you will have thermal dissipation. You always have, even if very small, you will always have absorption in the component. Uh, so you can damage the component, you can uh, heat it up. And so if you do that, um, you must uh, have a component that resists to the total combined power. Because the final one, if you even if you use beam splitters, a series of beam splitters, the final one will, will receive and will be exposed to the total power. So this one must be very, very, uh, very, uh, very uh, robust uh, component. And even if it's uh, resisting to the total combined power, if it, even if it's not damaged, uh, you will still have thermal dissipation that can be uh, changing the, the combiner optical properties and uh, that can be detrimental to the efficiency of the combining. So that's always a, lim a limitation in terms of uh, combined power. Uh, you also always have a limitation in the number of channels. This one is very complex to summarize because it can come from different uh, different issues depending on the, the combining techniques and the, the power you want to achieve. For instance, spectral beam combining is limited by the laser gain bandwidth and the minimum spacing between the wavelength. Uh, that's why I think the um, Lockheed Martin couldn't manage to add four more lasers to the spectral beam combining demonstration. They, they were stuck at 96. It was diff very difficult to achieve 100. I, they had the money to do 100. So if it was possible, uh, so basically the number of channels was somehow limited there to a little less than 100. And on error, for instance, we use uh, what's called frequency tagging, current combining, that's limited by the maximum clock frequency for frequency tagging and the minimum spacing between the tagging frequency. Meaning if you increase the number of channels, you will have to increase the, the clock frequency and uh, you have a, a maximum number of, 
of channels that can be combined. Even if some uh, preliminary calculations, you can combine up to thousands of channels using these kind of techniques. Of course, uh, it's more difficult and more complex to do that when the number increases. Uh, you have also a limit in terms of alignment sensitivity, especially for uh, when you use combiners, but also for other techniques. Uh, you have optical components to align, and so uh, you have a sensitivity to the, the accuracy of this alignment, and uh, inaccurate alignment will always result in a decreased combining efficiency. So combined laser systems, in summary, that's a complex trade-off uh, between uh, increasing the number of channels and increase the power of the individual channels. And that's why it's, it's not so easy uh, to use these kind of techniques. To conclude this, uh, this uh, brief introduction to the world of laser combining, uh, what are the future prospects? Uh, of course, with a laser weapon, you must propagate through the atmosphere, so you have to uh, compensate for uh, turbulence in the atmosphere. And uh, recently, we demonstrated that uh, you can achieve current combining on a non-cooperative target at one kilometer range, uh, compensating or mitigating uh, turbulence somehow uh, using a frequency tagging uh, current combining. Uh, and that's, uh, that's an interesting result, and that's uh, some things uh, that we are working on at ONERA for, uh, at the moment. Uh, you also want to increase the number of combined channels, of course. Uh, that, that means that you will have a, an increased complexity and you will have uh, some issues in terms of complexity management when you increase this number of channels. And of course, a laser weapon, you don't want it to be uh, too dangerous. It must be dangerous for the target, but not for the uh, people that are around the target, let's say, especially for their eyes. They shouldn't be blind after the operation of the, of, of the laser. And so laser safety is a main concern. And um, for that, you have to use non-standard wavelength, uh, adding some uh, technical challenges to both power generation and laser combining. So thanks for your attention. And now I will let uh, Tanguy uh, talk, you, talk to you about uh, some, some components that can be used also for, for combining. Thank you, Pierre, for all this explanation. Now I'm going to, to continue the presentation with, uh, with the following question, how to implement uh, high efficiency combiners with an optimal output beam quality. And Yes, I'm going to explain uh, what we developed at Skylabs and especially our multiplane light conversion. Uh, this solution, our MPLC, is a techn technology patented by Skylabs in 2010. Uh, MPLC is a reflective technology uh, and passive optical process whose principle is derived from uh, quantum optics. And the idea is uh, with a succession of face plates and free space propagation, we have the ability to transform any kind of Gaussian beam in whatever we want as soon as it's a unitary transformation, a unitary basis into another unitary basis. So uh, if you want a more complex shape and multiple beams, mathemat mathematically, they always have a solution to modify this shape with more face place and with more uh, free space propagation. So, but if you have to do that in transmission, uh, you have a lot of uh, insertion losses. That's why at Skylabs, we decided to, to have the device in reflection. So we realized a unique text a texture of surface, a unique face plates, and the free sp uh, space propagation is done with the help of uh, only one unique mirror. So we, have much, we can have much more input. Uh, we can combine them or divide them. Uh, into only one or separate ch channel. So we have several optical fiber at the input. We modify each input with the face plates um, and the space propagation until uh, the output of our component. Uh, we can also, of course, modify uh, the fiber element uh, to free space optic, and you can have a lot of different configuration which correspond to, to different applications. So you understand that we can do a lot of things with this component, uh, such as combining bins. Uh, at Kai Labs, we have started to, to investigate uh, our MPLC technology in the field of space multi multiplexing in telecom area. Uh, we like to play with a special uh, mode basis. We already mix uh, 45 mods uh, in a standard multi-mode fiber in the past. 
And this ability to, to play with this light mode in our cavity, our a component are really interesting. Uh, this approach allows uh, to use a component as a beam combiner. And this is the subject of our uh, presentation today too. Uh, so a few minutes ago, uh, Pierre gave us a lot of information about the, the, the state of the art of the beam combination today. And the main challenge to improve the power of the laser sources, coherent uh, or incoherent, it's to not increase the entire volume also to these emission components in order to still have an unbeatable component uh, at the end. Uh, remember uh, that in order to combine coherent beams, uh, phase polarization and wavelengths uh, must be controlled uh, to create a combined output using uh, constructive interferences. Uh, for the incoherent combination, uh, you do not need this input control. You just have to realize uh, an additive superposition uh, without interferences. Um, we are going to, to, to highlight the solutions that uh, MPLC and Kylabs technology can bring to this type of, uh, of problem. Uh, indeed, through different examples, we will show that MPLC can be a very interesting tool uh, for the coherent and incoherent combination. Uh, the MPLC has got uh, 100 theoretical combination efficiency, and as explained uh, before, it's a passive and reflective technology. So its reflective property have been validated today at 12 kilowatts for laser coaching uh, improvement. Uh, it's not a li limit, uh, and we plan to, to manage uh, higher power in the next uh, months. And in addition, it also improves um, the quality of the combined beam uh, by providing uh, an optimized output also, which is an interesting uh, information tool. Um, the presentation will be in two parts to explain our solution for coherent and then uh, incoherent um, combination. For the first part and the coherent beam combination, we are going to propose different approaches of combination to, to fully understand uh, all the possibilities of the MPLC. A standard coherent uh, combination approach and a much more complex approach to take into a, uh, account uh, the, the small phase shift and um, uh, amplitude variation of the of the input sources. Um, yeah. Okay. The, the, the main avant advantages of the coherent beams is they are small line widths, uh, the good beam, good beam quality also, because they are most of the time single mode. Uh, how do we handle it uh, and how do we handle the, the input beam? We assume a given number of inputs, and then we will convert uh, each of the input mode to a given uh, special mode. Uh, to produce the best, best uh, possible output beam. Uh, numerically, uh, with this technique, the obtained uh, mods may appear strange uh, with uh, very particular shapes, but on soon, the output obtained is really good. Uh, in the following example, uh, we have realized a combiner uh, of four coherent beams, and which, if they are perfectly in phase, uh, gives us a really good quality output beam. However, um, the, the issue, the, the problem with this approach is that in case of um, intensity of phase variation of one of the inputs, we can imagine that the shape of the output beam will be strongly impacted. Indeed, uh, as we can see in the example below, uh, any variation of the phase or amplitude will cause a lot of fluctuation on the, on the, the output results. Um, in this example, we numerically uh, modelize uh, this phenomenon with a random phase uh, uh, input. And therefore, we need to find a way uh, to be more resist to, the, to this uh, uh, fluctuation phenomenon. And at Kai Labs, we propose uh, another approach, a uh, superman approach to manage the, um, this phase variation with, uh, with uh, our MPLC, so how it works. Uh, we consider all the, the modes taken together as a super mode. Uh, mathematically, the, the main one uh, is uh, the, the coherent sum of all the primary modes in the output plane. It corresponds to the, to the first uh, uh, column in the right side picture. We complete uh, after uh, the input uh, base of super modes with what we call perturbation uh, super modes. 
uh, it's a super mode orthogonal to the main one. It corresponds to the three other columns in the right side picture. And so uh, for a n um, or for a number n of primary input, the super mode basis will be complete, uh, completed with n minus one um, perturbation super modes. And, and the important thing, each uh, input uh, being a linear combination of the primary, prim primary inputs. So what's happened uh, with uh, what we call this um, pixel-like approach? Uh, we know there, uh, we know where is uh, the output beam uh, when the input beam are perfectly in phase, and but we manage also the beams uh, which are not in phase. And as you can see in the peaks below, the um, random phase effect is not the same, and you have at each time a good beam uh, somewhere else. Uh, so the output beam quality is conserved when input phase and amplitude fluctuate. And we have uh, also a Nairos uh, signal, uh, which is a three other output beam. Um, this error uh, signal can be interesting also um, if uh, we want, for example, to, to improve our uh, phase locker with a retroaction loop. So to finish with the current combination, I would like to, to share with you some, uh, some results about the performances uh, obtained with this uh, new approach. Uh, the beam combination is really efficient. 83% of the energy is inside the central beam. We obtain a really good um, beam quality at the output of our system. Uh, we have an M square close to 1.4. Uh, and this is a first uh, demonstration, a first proof of concept. And we are really confident uh, for the future to, to, re to improve this, uh, to improve this, this results uh, again. So to conclu conclude at Kylabs, we can provide really efficient square run combiner, really robust too, uh, which produce really good beam quality. So in the second part, uh, I'm going to present our solution about uh, our solution for incoherent, incoherent combination, how to combine uh, incoherent beams with the MPLC, and what are the solutions to improve the, the injection of the, of the input beam. So first, why the incoherent uh, combination is interesting? Because of course, uh, it's an additive superposition, superposition without uh, any input uh, phase, polarization wavelength control requirement. Uh, for the next slide, I'm going to, to show the example of the QCL because we saw uh, the last de de decade uh, the, uh, the arrival of a new promising emission, source, emission sources, the quantum cascade uh, laser sources. They propose um, really interesting wavelengths in the mid infrared. Uh, they are small, but perfectly embeddable. And they produce uh, incoherent light in a super, super luminescent uh, configuration. Um, beam combination can be a solution to increase the output power while take, taking uh, advantage of the small size of uh, standard QCL components on the shelf today. Um, so the incoherent QCL beam combination is today a real technology challenge. Uh, why? Because they are small, but they have uh, today limited unit power, around uh, run watt. Uh, they are monomode, but as soon as they are combined, they are, do not have a really good output beam quality, but they propose really interesting wavelengths on the mid infrared. However, it's trickier to obtain a relative full beam at the output of the current combiner on the market. So uh, that's why uh, we say that it's a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a challenge today to achieve uh, high power combiners with low divergence beam. Um, so the, the current solution for beam combination is also uh, a modal approach. Uh, the idea is also to convert each input into a specific special mode. The linear, linear combination of this converted mode uh, will give uh, the output final beam. And for this kind of combination, we do not have to manage any phase variation. So we can be focused only on the beam combination efficiency and the beam quality of the output beam. Um, in this uh, present example, where we combine four uh, input beams, we convert uh, each input into a specific uh, Lager-Gauss mode. 
uh, input one into LG01, and LG uh, uh, input two into LG10. Uh, uh, and as you can see, uh, the final output is a real sum of the four inputs. Um, what is the beam quality that can be achieved with uh, this kind of mode combination? Uh, in this previous slide, this previous example, we converted uh, one input into an energy mode. And in this table, uh, as you can see, we can uh, observe that each LG mode is associated to uh, M square value, which uh, represents uh, the beam quality of uh, each mode. Um, if we sum all the mode, uh, we obtain an, opti an optimal m square value at the at the output of our components, and more input we have, of course, must mod, uh, more mod we we must manage, and higher will be the m square uh, at the end uh, uh, of our output beam. However, on the example of the right side, we can see that for MPLC with ten mods, we we obtained a theoretical m square at the output of our component around three. Uh, in the graph in front of you, uh, you can check in gray the theoretical uh, optic optimal M square that you can obtain if you want to create the best beam combiner. Uh, the other point uh, are what are the expected performance uh, for the other current incoherent um, combiner. And in orange, the, the orange uh, line, it's our performances which allow to the MPLC today to be the, the state of the art of the incoherent combination regarding the beam quality. Um, to conclude, uh, I want to, to spend some time uh, with, uh, the, on this uh, review uh, slide. You can see the expected the performance that you can waiting for uh, when you, you plan to use the MPLC component for, for as, as a beam uh, combiner. Uh, for the current combination, the MPLC gives the possibility to, to be more robust to the phase uh, intensity variation. And at the input, you, you will have a really good output beam quality and a good combining uh, efficiency with a really good M square. For the incoherent combination, we have to manage lower beam quality, but the MPLC guarantees an optimal output beam and a really good combining efficiency too. The Kylabs component is a real technology break for beam combination today. And we believe uh, it will uh, contribute very quickly to the rise of uh, coherent and incoherent uh, laser system in the future. So I finished my presentation. So thank you for your attention. And now it's time for, for questions. Okay, so uh, I think that the next question is also uh, uh, connected to this one. Uh, these are questions about the the, um, the impact of the line width uh, on the on the combining on the current combining uh, and um, on the amplification in the lasers. Uh, First of all, generally, the uh, amplification and um, uh, line width uh, uh, narrowing or enhancement uh, are not really correlated, but uh, con combining uh, with uh, uh, not so narrow line width, let's say, uh, broadened lasers around uh, gigahertz or tens of gigahertz, for instance, uh, they can be difficult to combine. Um, there, there are some uh, Let's say discussions between the the experts in the uh, in the field of uh, current combining about what's the maximum acceptable uh, broadening for a laser source if you want to be able to combine the lasers um, efficiently. Uh, but well, so first for this question uh, specifically, of course you have to um, uh, to deal with uh, stimulated brilliant scattering, uh, which will that's a one of the nonlinear effects that will limit. Uh, the power of uh, neural line width lasers, uh, but you have many techniques to deal with this kind of, uh, of limitation. Uh, some are uh, use uh, modulation and so uh, line width broadening of the laser. Some do not really use that or not directly. 
and uh, modify the the, the, the the brilliant gain in the fiber. For instance, we at Onero we have developed some techniques based on uh, stress in the fibers that can uh, multiply by three or four the the threshold of, of uh, brilliant scattering. And um, so you you can deal with them uh, differently. And uh, in some cases, they, they don't have any real impact on the current combining performance and efficiency. So that's uh, more than often uh, not correlated uh, how far you can uh, power scale the laser and uh, the, the line width broadening uh, that you require to uh, to be able to operate without brilliant scattering limits. Uh, and in some cases, it is, uh, it is uh, correlated. Uh, but I think in this case, uh, we go to the second question because <laughs> um, that's uh, mainly uh, a matter of impact on the current combining. You have to do that. If you want to, for instance, if you want to, to operate your laser at one kilowatt, uh, one kilowatt sorry, uh, you have uh, to broaden it to 15 gigahertz or something like that. And it's quite broad for, uh, for laser. Um, uh, one consequence is uh, the what we call the, the, the current length of the laser, uh, as mentioned in the question, is only a few centimeters. That means that you have to uh, put delay lines on each of your channels, and you must adapt these delay lines so that the, the length, the optical length of each, of each channel is equal to the centimeter uh, accuracy. So that's one additional uh, thing to add to the an already uh, complex system. Uh, my recommendation would be to to try to avoid uh, adding complexity to an already very complex system, especially if you want to increase the number of, of channels. Because increasing the number of channels will add complexity. And so if you have other uh, constraints on the system, such as uh, control of the, of the current length, of the, of the optical path length, uh, it can make it very difficult to operate the system in practice. Uh, some people consider that uh, a laser at 25 gigahertz is single frequency. I'm not so sure of that. Uh, it, it, for sure, it will it will uh, change the the contrast of the interference pattern, and so the efficiency of the combining. And uh, I would recommend uh, limiting the, the the broadening as as much as possible. But I will uh, end the answer to this question by saying that there is a, an important question on, uh, on combining. Um, is it better to improve, to increase the power of the unitary lasers or to increase the number of lasers? And uh, if you ask for my opinion, I would prefer to increase the number of lasers and work with not so powerful lasers. Uh, so I have to, to get rid of the problems with uh, current length and, uh, and so on and not have to broaden the laser too much. Uh, this one, uh, I don't get exactly what intermodulation is, but once again, if it's a matter of uh, all the modulation, yeah, I, I think it's linked to the modulation you, you require, for instance, for frequency tagging and uh, an eventual impact on laser beam amplification. Uh, that's an, uh, one of the advantages of, of frequency tagging. Generally, you try to uh, you you modulate the phase of the of the beam, so you you don't have a, a direct impact on on, uh, on the intensity of the beam somehow. You have some impact on the intensity of the interference pattern, but not on the intensity of the beam. So uh, let's say that on the amplification itself, as you modulate the phase, it's not an issue. Uh, what is the total maximum optical power in a combiner? Uh, combiner. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the combiner. Uh, let's say that uh, diffraction gratings, uh, Bragg gratings, they all have demonstrated something like uh, one kilowatt power easily. And uh, the issue arises when you reach the tens of kilowatt power generally. Uh, mainly because of the, the op not because you damage the, the the grating, but because the uh, the properties can be changed. For instance, for spectral beam combining, very often uh, the um, uh, 
the bandwidth that's filtered by the, the, the grating will, will, will move. And uh, so you have to align your laser at full power. Uh, that's an issue. Or you have to find some ways to, to heat up the, the, the grating. It's, it's not so easy to, to handle. But let's say it's already been demonstrated up to 30 kilowatt. I, I showed you that it's possible to spectrally combine up to 30 kilowatt or 60 kilowatt without too much is issues. But you could see in the, in the real uh, efficiency of the combining uh, for the Lockheed Martin results that they already had some issues with thermal dissipation in the grading anyway. And especially that's why I think the 58 kilowatt uh, demonstration was, was not so good. So basically a few kilowatts is not an issue. A few tens of kilowatts can begin to be an issue. Um, I think this question is for... It, it oh, was sorry, for, I, I didn't see that. <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> but I think that we have a lot of questions uh, about the, the, the power of uh, the MPLC that we are uh, able to, to manage. Um, the MPLC technology is um, normally able to work at any kind of uh, power. Uh, today, we have proved that we can work uh, at 16 uh, kilo, kilowatts. But yes, uh, it depends uh, of a lot of uh, that input data. In fact, the wavelengths, uh, the type of uh, lasers you, you would like to use. But we are uh, compatible with this kind of uh, this kind of uh, power, 10 watt, uh, 100 watt. Uh, we, we need to discuss this uh, specification if you want to 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 to, to go deeper in, in the detail of, of this kind of uh, yes, this kind of specification. But we can manage this this power. Sorry, Pierre. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, how precise does space control need to be? Um, uh, the MPLC is compatible with any kind of uh, phase locker today. Uh, that uh, um, yes, uh, on every kind of techniques of of, of phase phase locker. So uh, it's hard to 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 answer uh, and to give details uh, um, on on that. I can complete the answer if you want. Uh, generally, for con combining uh, with phase control, uh, when you have an inaccuracy in terms of, uh, of phase control, uh, it will result in what's called a, a phase difference, uh, a residual phase difference uh, error. And uh, generally, we consider that a uh, one thirtieth wave uh, is an excellent. Uh, combining efficiency. So if you're, you control the phase up to uh, 2 pi over 30, normally it's very good. You can go down to 2 pi over 20, so pi over 10. And uh, you can go, if you go lower than uh, 120th wave, generally it starts to be not so convenient, not so satisfying in terms of combining efficiency. Uh, that's. Uh, what we consider generally in terms of figures. Uh, the, most of the demonstrations up to now have been done at uh, one micron, uh, 1064 nanometer. Yeah. Uh, two micron can be interesting uh, in terms of laser safety, essentially. Uh, but there are multiple issues as i mentioned in my in my last slide uh, you have some issues to increase the power at such wavelength and uh, um, combining is not so difficult mm, two micron is not not very uh, more difficult uh, wavelength you have some issues with detection because you must measure the phase difference for instance it's uh, more difficult at two micron than one micron but for instance, in frequency tagging, you use a mono detector, so a single sensor, not a ma uh, an array of sensors. So uh, it's not so much difficult to do. So how many beams could be combined and could you improve beam quality and efficiency? What was the limitation in this experiment? Uh, theoretically, there is no limit, so we can uh, uh, combines a lot of beams at the input of our combiner. The only issue is, uh, for example, for incoherent beam combination, you are going to to um, to decrease uh, the uh, output quality at the end of uh, of the of the combiner. And of course, also um, 
uh, much more input you have to, to manage, uh, much more complicated is, uh, is uh, management of that. And of course, uh, you, you, you have some kind of loss about the efficiency of the complete system. But theoretically, yeah, there, is, there is no, no limit uh, about uh, the number of beams we, we can manage today. Which phase modulation? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, it's not really a matter of preference. Uh, it's a matter of uh, configuration. Uh, it's still uh, some issues that are under study, I think. And um, there's no definitive answer to this question. Uh, each method has its advantages and uh, limitations. Um, I would say the simplest one would be the better, <laughs> uh, but uh, sometimes you, you you can choose a nice method that are a little more complex and uh, in some configuration will work better. So uh, no no real preference. Uh, let's say that you have to um, to study the, your phase modulation method uh, in details when you want to build a, a current combining system. I can see that uh, you have a lot of questions. Unfortunately, we are we are a little bit limited in uh, limited in, in time. Uh, that's why uh, I propose to 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 answer to all these questions uh, by email. Uh, one 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 all of them. Uh, so thanks for all for all your attention. You and uh, we will be really happy to, to present you this uh, this kind of uh, of webinar. And uh, have a nice uh, end of day. Bye. Bye. Thank you.